This week I got a new vise for my machine, got it installed, got it mostly aligned, broke a tip for the Heimer, and also got coolant put into the machine, so it's just about ready to go. Welcome to another episode. So in the last episode, one of the things I wasn't sure how to handle was aligning the machine to eliminate twist. I spent quite a bit of time talking to the regional service manager for the local HFO and learned that this machine is actually designed so that it can be on casters and wheeled from one location to another. Because of that, it doesn't really need to be aligned for twist. You basically just get it fairly close to level and then you're off. The leveling that I did last time is all that I need to do before I can start. I learned that there are two types of memory. There is memory and then there's hard drive. And what I didn't realize is that the 750 megabytes that I thought this machine had, it does have, but it's actually hard drive instead of memory. So if I go over here and press the arrow keys to hard drive and then press right to enter, you can see I have a list of files. This is my 750 megabytes of memory and what I find out by talking to the HFO is that I can run programs from here just as quickly as if they came from RAM. So that's excellent news. I do have 750 megabytes of memory. I was in touch with the local Blazer, I guess it's pronounced Blazer, not Blazer, distributor. And they were absolutely great. I guess being a hobbyist uh, leaves a soft spot in their hearts. Bruce from the, the company, I believe he's the owner of the company, came out and brought some coolant with him, brought a refractometer, which I purchased, and helped me clean out the, the gunk that was in the machine before, in other words, some of the, the previous coolant and leftovers, get the coolant in the machine, and it's pretty much all set to go at this point. So what I'm gonna do is, we're, I'm gonna show you a bunch of things that have happened in the last two weeks uh, for the Haas, including getting the coolant in and various other things. So what type of uh, cleaner is this? Well, we... Oh, I see. Is we, this what it is right here? Yep. We searched long and hard. The things I like to sell are non-toxic. Got it. And I, have, I have looked at so many cleaners. So what can you use this cleaner on? Uh, uh, well... On, I, on the machine, pretty much everything? Yeah, it's for... Um, it's for uh, carbon-based products. Mm -hmm. So it's not for, it's designed actually to replace the solvent. That's how we got into it. Oh, so to, to be able to uh, clean off oil? Yes. Okay. Yeah, when I, first, uh, when I first got the line, I, I, they called me into a meeting at Boeing. And they had, uh, they were using a product called uh, Trimsol, a master chemical. And, uh, they had this concern over phenols mm -hmm. in the coolant and Master Chemical said there's no phenols in our coolant don't worry about it so I guess some employees had a problem or something but they wound up testing everything in the whole building this was down on uh, marginal mm -hmm. the whole building was tested for phenols except the coolant and they couldn't find phenols and then somebody finally tested the coolant and it was like loaded with them and so they called me into a meeting and so uh, and I I said, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be there. They didn't tell me really what it was for. And then uh, the guy, they were all sitting at a table. He puts it on speakerphone, and they call the head chemist of Master Chemical, and they say, are there any phenols in your coolant? And the head guy goes, uh, we've had this conversation before, no. And Boeing says, well, we have spent tens of thousands of dollars checking all of our wave loops, oils, water, water, everything, and we found, we tested your coolant, and it had 11,000 ppm of phenols. And the guy on the other end of the phone goes, oh, you mean the good phenols? And the guy literally said, thank you, hung up, <laughs> looked down this long table at me, and goes, does your coolant have phenols? And I didn't know. I mean, I figured Master Chemical lied with Blazer lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I don't think so, but I'll have it tested. I took two samples, took them over here to Redmond. They found, so, uh, so they found 10 ppm of phenol in the blazer and uh, 11,000 something in the master chemical. 
And the little guy, lady over here wrote me a note saying, she doesn't think there's 10,000 ppm in Blazer. She thinks it was still so contaminated, no matter how much they cleaned it, the next sample they did was gonna have ppm of, 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 you know. Not only do you get cooling, you get a conversation. <laughs> So how did I get selected to have you uh, come over and help me with this? Well, two things. One, I live right here. Ed, I think what you're doing look pretty pretty. I saw your uh, your uh, website or your YouTube, and you look like you were uh, having a good time. Yeah. It was in a different office, but uh, yeah, I thought, well, you know what? Let's see what we can do here. I would like to have people. This has changed my company. This. Do you follow Titan Gilroy at all? Yeah. So, I met that guy a couple times. He seems to be pretty straightforward, but a little sensationalized. But, uh, he's, a, he's a good marketing person. He, he's a good marketing person, and you know what I liked about him, because I had a couple of things we went to, he was there, because Blazers pays him the sponsor. Yep. And that guy, I think he would, he was Blazer without them sponsoring. But he, uh, he mentioned the, uh, the coolant before anybody else set it out and uh wow man did we have people calling us and we couldn't even supply it that guy's got a kind of a following but you know it really does seem like manufacturing is uh having a resurgence in the u.s because of cnc machining uh that's the sense i get do you get that sense yep i totally agree with you and, and i'll tell you i think part of it a lot of it has been hot yeah you know they have made a they have made a product here that I think has just taken the market. They they are making stuff every year, a little more innovative. Is it the is it the highest productivity you can buy? Yeah, maybe in some cases, but but it's good value. Great value. Great value. I think. You know, I mean, I one of the trends that I really see is coming down the road now is not touching the spindle. Now it's uh, uh pallets. Robots and loading, unloading. Mm -hmm. That's some robotics, but there's awful lot of uh, awful lot of unmanned once it's set up because they're not finding people. Yeah, it's very hard, very difficult to find. Well, I'm gonna put uh, let's see, three gallons into that pail. Okay, three gallons of water. Three gallons of water. Now, most coolants, if they are soluble oils, you need to um, okay, you need to um, have go through a mixer. You have to add the oil to the water. But this is just simply coolant system. Got it. Now we're going to take our refractometer. Uh -huh. So I have it at five right now. So that means, so what that means is that 5% mm -hmm. of what's in that pail is not water. I know this is a grease pack, but there's probably gonna be some oils and stuff that's gonna get down in the tank. So maybe in a month from now, you can pull out the, slide out the tank a little bit and see if there's any oils on the top. Mm -hmm. And if you really want, really, really want clean coolant, if you've let it set for a while, you haven't run the machine, say for, you said maybe you might not run it for a couple weeks or something. Yeah. If it's set, that oil will come to the top. Yep. And you take a wet dry back, hold it about that high off the tank, and just the oil will come off. Okay, so you do that rather than a pig blanket? No, you use a pig blanket too, but I don't think pig blankets get over there. I don't think that's it. Okay. Okay. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. That bucket was clean too. And it shows we're right at six. Or a little a hair under. Which we could you know mm -hmm. what? We can fix that. Watch this. I couldn't do this with other uh coolers. So it's currently at uh, six, six and a quarter. That looks good to me. So after this is maybe run a little bit, you might uh, just let it sit and see the oil come to the top and then you can use your pig pan. Yep, so there you go. So now cool. let me figure out how to pour some of this into a one gallon container. Okay, we'll send you a bill. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to bill you for the refractometer and we'll let the rest go. I got this brand new vise from Char's. Well, that's interesting. It has some uh, rust on it already. Yeah, it looks like that rust is a little bit deeper, so uh, it may be okay, but it bugs me. So one thing I don't know if, if these keys are in the right place for my mill or not. I'll have to check, and if they're not, then I'll probably have to take the keys out. Okay. All right, so this looks like it may project a little bit too far to the front. It doesn't go all the way to the back. So I'm going to get out a tape measure and have a look. Okay. Yep, this projects out three inches. And I want the vise uh, about centered, uh, I think. I'm not going to be working with really large pieces to begin with, so it should be clear of the, the fourth axis. Now, come to think of it, I'll move it over just a little bit. So I've got uh, some toe clamps on here. And one of the things I want to do is to replace the toe clamps with some custom clamps that I'm going to make. So this is a uh, 3D print, and what I wanted to do is to make sure that this fits before I make the parts out of steel. So I'll go ahead and put this in here. Yeah, and that fits perfectly. So I'm going to make some of these custom hold-down clamps, which will take a lot less space and uh, allow me to uh, use a wrench to pull down on them and I like that approach much better than the clamping kit that I'm using at the moment. And that's probably going to be the first part that I make on this mill. I ordered the steel which I've received but I just have to continue getting this set up. So the next thing is going to be to get the uh, device all aligned. So I learned that once I'm in the hand jog mode, then I can press tool release. And now it's in there. I'm going to press orient spindle. So I have a consistent rotation each time. And then I'll press tool release and put the hammer in. 
back and around twice. Okay, I'm going to move to the smallest. Okay, now let's see what happens when I sweep back in the, the X and Y. Okay, I'm going to move a little bit faster. Okay, so it needs to move quite a distance. The uh, vice that is. Okay, first time using a Heimer on the Haas and I break the tip. This is the light that's in there now. I need to clean this a little bit more and see if maybe take it off and clean it on the inside as well. Because this is yellowed a little bit right now. Maybe not yellowed so much, it's hard to tell because the light bulb in here is a warm white rather than daylight. And I prefer daylight for filming. I managed to get the cover off of the light and as you can see, th this is a compact fluorescent. Unscrew this. Just it's flaking off and going down into the the pan, so I'm going to vacuum up that as well. I've got this 5,000 Kelvin 12 watt LED. I might search for one that's a little brighter, but that should fit in there just fine. I've been slowly working on cleaning the plastic cover for the light, and there's a lot of probably coolant that was here before that's kind of solidified. So I soaked it with some of this uh, material, the uh, Extreme 2 that uh, Bruce gave me the other day, because he said it's uh, non-toxic and uh, it does a great job. So let's see how it does after soaking for a little while. Oh yeah, that makes a huge difference. So I just need to keep soaking this and then wiping it off until I get it uh, clean. This is a pretty intimidating display and has a lot of buttons. So I was really curious about what it would take to become comfortable with it. After playing around with it and reading just a little bit, I'm starting to feel somewhat comfortable already. And that may be because by day I'm a software developer, so things like this are fairly natural to me. So in case I haven't mentioned this before, the approach I'm taking is to take it slow. I wanna make sure that I understand the machine, I understand what I'm doing, and I don't go too quickly. I've been getting some great advice from uh, people in the area, such as the Haas HFO, excellent advice from the local Blasier distributor, also excellent advice, but even better service as you saw. And so I'm getting closer and closer to getting the machine running. I think what I'm gonna do now, since I have the machine just about ready, is order a new Heimer tip, unfortunately, but also see if I can get uh, Will to come over. He has a Haas OM2 or one of the other guys who has experiences with Haas and set up a program to make the, the toe clips for the vise and mill some of the toe cl clips and uh, see how that goes. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment, and I'll see you next time.